My name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the GRE, the third edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today is our lesson number 72. Day day 3072 3003 is to indicate that we are in the third edition third edition day 72 we are on page 280 we are in the process of solving these geometry exercises the geometry problems and we are on problem number six right now problem number six as it appears in the book and as it appears in the on the blackboard is slight they are slightly different here's what the problem says and we're going to do two of them the book only has one problem which is what i'm labeling as 6a and then after that we're going to do one more it says the length of the two sides of an isosceles triangle, triangle rather, are 15 and 22. We have an isosceles triangle, we are told, and we are told that the length of two sides of the triangle are, are, are 15 and 22. The question is, which quantity is bigger? We have converted this thing, we are we have, presenting this thing as a quantitative comparison question. In column A, we are given the perimeter of the triangle, and in column B, we are given 55. And our job is to establish uh, which quantity is bigger, if that is in fact the case, or if we cannot tell. Let's, let's keep going. Enough of your talk. So, as you know, there are going to be a couple of scenarios. One scenario, because it's an isosceles triangle, one scenario is you're told that two sides are 15 and 22. Where do we put 15? Where do we put 22? That's the whole point. So, the scenario one and scenario two. In one scenario, you can put 15 here, where the two sides are equal. In another scenario, you can put 22 over here where the two sides are equal because it says two sides are 15 and 22. In this scenario, if this is what we're calling 15, then the, this will be 22 and here it will be 15. Let's talk about this scenario, scenario A. Here the parameter would simply be 15 plus 15 is 30, 30 plus 22. 30 plus 22. In this case, the parameter is 52. In scenario, in scenario 1, the parameter is 52 as we just saw here in scenario 1 it is 52 and we're being asked to compare it against 55 but in this case of course the answer is B the question is do we just pick answer choice B and move on answer of course is no because what does it mean as I always remind you as we always remi remind ourselves what does it mean when we pick answer choice A, B or C in these quantitative comparison question when we pick answer choice A what we're claiming is that quantity in column A is always, always, always bigger. If we were to move on right now at this point, what, we'll, what we would have been claiming is that the quantity in column B is always greater. And that of course is not the case because that of course may not be the case I should say because we haven't looked at this here. Let's take a look at it here. So here these two sides are 22 each so we're going to get 44 plus 15 and now we get 59. In scenario 2 we get parameter of 59 compared to 55. Now the answer is A. Obviously, quantity in column B is not always greater, and neither is quantity in column A always greater. The answer here is D, because we cannot tell. The answer to this problem would be D. Let's do one more. Let's call it 6B. It's a similar problem. It's a similar problem, but worded slightly differently. So here's, here's part B. It says the sum of two sides, the sum of the length of two sides of a triangle. Okay, so I'm just going to I'm just going to insert here. It says the sum of the length of two sides of an isosceles triangle. It's no longer going to be R because it's singular. The sum. One more time, the sum of the length of the two sides of the triangle is eight. We are told, we are also told that one of the sides, one of its sides equals 3. Again, our job is same as before. Our job is to compare the perimeter of the triangle, this time versus 13. And if you like, there is no harm in it. If you wish, you can pause the video right now, 
do the problem yourself that actually would be a, ver a very good idea an excellent idea do the problem yourself and then once you have your answer you can resume it and then compare your work against the work that you and I are about to do together do you understand so pause the video if you wish let's do it together shall we so here we know that the sum 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 of two sides has to equal 8 so let's draw an isosceles triangle we also know that one of the side is 3 again it's the same problem where do we put the 3 it's an isosceles triangle these two sides are equal right where do we put 3 it's up to us we can put the 3's here or we can put the 3 at the bottom here another thing we have to realize is that we are told that the sum of the two sides has to equal 8 but if the sum of two sides has to equal 8 obviously these two do not equal 8 we need a 5. So now we have met both of the conditions, conditions being that the sum of the two sides equals 8 and one of the sides equals 3. Here we have two sides actually, then so equal to 3, that's fine. But if, it, if it had been exactly one side that equals 3, they would have said that. They would have said exactly one side of the triangle equals 3. If, if, if they simply say that one of the sides equals 3, that means that there could be one more side or maybe all the sides equal 3. Do you understand? That's how they play the game. So if they say one of the sides of the triangle equals 3, we mustn't interpret that as exactly one side being equal to 3. If it's a triangle, maybe all three sides are equal to 3, in which case it's an equilateral triangle. Or maybe two of the sides are equal to 3, like here, in which case it's an isosceles triangle. They do, they're not going to say at least one side, do you understand? They're just going to say one of the sides equals 3. If they meant to say exactly one side, they would say exactly one side of the triangle equals 3, do you understand? So that's the first scenario. In this case, the parameter would simply be 3 plus 3 is 6, 6 plus 5 is 11. In this case, in this case, parameter equals 11. I shouldn't have written it there. Parameter equals 11, and we're being asked to compare it against 13. You see? In that case, the answer, of course, would be B. Let's see what, what, what would have be. So if you put 5 here, 5 plus 5 is 10 plus, so now it's 13. Now it is 13. In this case, in second scenario, the answer is 13 and we are being asked to compare it against 13 now the answer is C before it was B now we see complete answer the answer choice is D answer is D let's do one more why not now before we do one more before we do third one I want to warn you that in the third problem that we are about to do there are going to be three possible scenarios not two possible scenarios three possible scenarios and what I would like you to do is after we finish doing two of the scenarios after we finish discussing two of the scenarios pause the video immediately and try to figure out the third scenario yourself no matter how long it takes figure out the third scenario yourself and then resume the video and see it'll be a nice exercise see if you can actually uh, figure out what, what, what could be the third possible scenario so same problem as before it says the sum of the length of two sides of the isosceles triangle is and this time it is 9 instead of 8. We have further told that one of the sides equals 5. One of the sides equals 5 and we are being asked to compare again, 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 one more time, against 13. Against 13. So let's, let's get going, shall we? So I'm going to put down two scenarios here. We will discuss these two scenarios and then, as I said, pause the video and then see if you can figure out the third scenario yourself. So here we go. So we come ask, ask to compare the parameter against 13. We are told that some of the two sides of the uh, two, some of the two sides of an isosceles triangle is 9. One of the sides equals 5. For one of the sides equals 5, it could be this or it could be these two. That was the easy part, wasn't it? If we put 5 here, then we need a 4 here and a 4 here, because two sides have to add up to 9. If we put a 5 here, we need a 4 here. That was very simple. In this case, the parameter was, parameter will be, 8 plus 5 is 13. Oh, so in this case it's 13, what do you know? In this case, the parameter is 13, and we're being asked to compare it against 13, so the answer is C here. That's the first scenario. Let's call it first scenario. In the second scenario, as it is presented here, parameter would be, 10 plus 5 plus 5 is 10 plus 4 is 14. Oh, now it's 14. Now it's 14. Parameter in the second scenario is 14. We are being asked to compare against 13. 
now of course the quantity A is bigger. So even if you cannot crack, even if somebody who cannot come up with the third scenario in their mind, which most people will not, you will still find the right answer in this problem. You will still manage to arrive at the right conclusion. The conclusion being that the answer here is D. D as in David because they are conflicting answers. We cannot tell for sure which quantity is bigger. Pause the video. I'll give you five seconds for you to be able to pause and unpause the video and do the third scenario yourself. Okay. Here's the third scenario. Here's the third scenario. We are told that the sum of the two sides has to equal 9. We also have one, we also have to have one side that have, one of its sides has to equal 5. One of the sides has to equal 5 and two sides have to add up to 9. How is it possible? We did 4, 5, we did 5, 4. What else? Well, what else is here? There we go. 4 and a half and 4 and a half, 4 and a half and 4 and a half add up to 9. So some of the two sides is 9, one of the sides is 5, 9 plus 5 is 14. Oh, is it 14? 9 plus 5. Oh, it is indeed 14. Oh, it changes. So now, the pre oh, it, said it, was, it was 14 before also. I, I knew it does, it not, I, I knew there were only two answers, C and A. I thought it was C and B. That would have been even more interesting. So we have 14 versus 13, same as before, the answer is A. So the correct answer here is D. So that was the third scenario. Right here. As you can see, there's nothing earth-shattering. It was just an interesting exercise. I wanted to see if you could come up with a third scenario. Because most people do not think of this uh, you know, out-of-the-box thing. They always think of these whole numbers, integers. Why can't side be four and a half inches long? Sure, they can be four and a half inches long, four and a half centimeters. Uh, and the two sides will add up to nine. Tomorrow, that's all we're going to do right now. Tomorrow, we'll, we'll do three problems dealing with the same topic. Topic being similar triangles. Similar triangles, problem number seven at the very bottom of page 280, the very last problem on page 280, and the first two problems on the next page on page 281, eight and nine, all of these three problems, problem number seven, eight, and nine, they all deal with the concept of similar triangles. And we're going to do all three of them together in the next video, in tomorrow's video. Okay? Bye now.